boom. Enter military status. Let's back up a bit, shall we? I'm just kidding. Maybe a little bit. Uh, there is a little bit of a tie-in that goes into this just a little bit. Uh, but stage three, part three of the testimony. Um, do, 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 do. So, so far, I've left a small portion of my life out. I've mentioned, um, I've mentioned this before, but not so much in an attachment to my uh, like time in life. So up until my young adulthood, I've done a really good job of shoving my sexuality down. I've been able to mask um, what I'm attracted to by, um, you know, having girlfriends or uh, getting involved with, let's say, masculine dominant styles of living. Now that's, I know that's a little gray. Um, and that won't change either. That won't change in the years to come, but essentially, once the military entered my life, um, it was more than just an attachment to a hardened, disciplined, strong, masculine lifestyle. So I was in 11 Bravo, which is infantry, front lines, baby. They don't even allow females on the front lines. For think for good reason um, but I'm still a little gray in that area so we'll see I know we're really wacky as human beings nowadays so I don't know we'll see what it comes to in the future I'm not opposed to anything um, I just come from a certain style of beliefs that I'm as I've mentioned trying to undo um, but when I went into the military, uh, there was a strong don't ask, don't tell policy, uh, which meant that if if you're, I quite honestly don't even know what the policy um, exactly stood for, but essentially, you don't ask me what I'm attracted to and I won't tell you, and I won't speak of it and it won't it won't become a problem on the front lines when shit actually hits the fan um, this would cause quite the dichotomy once I enter the military I've more so cut myself off from who I I want to use these terms like born to be or, or, or meant to be in a, in a, in a, in a soft, I want to use those terms lightly, um, but essentially I have been breaking away and been putting on masks for my entire life up until this point and the military only made it that much more solidified. Now I would become much more say masculine in a sense um, when joining the military I become more grounded stronger more disciplined more in control of my actions um, which is very good it's, 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 it's what I needed it's absolutely what I require I mean, every, every human being requires a sense of stability and structure and so-called self-control um, in their life. I don't think, I, I know I'm close to, uh, I gotta take an exit here soon, so I just gotta make sure I'm going in the right direction. Um, so the military was a good part of my life, don't get me wrong, 
but it would only solidify or darken or create a dichotomy in my mind frame, in my way of belief system that that I, I wouldn't understand or come to a uh, you know I wouldn't come to a an understanding to until the future. that my sexuality is what I'm attracted to is um, I want to use the right term and I don't think I'll, I'll think of it um, it's not true now I don't actually believe that I am very much in question as far as what it means to be attracted to the same person or see yourself as a different sex, so to speak. Um, and I am... All, all I really think about these days is how I'm going to impact the world in a way that we're going to help better understand this aspect of life. Hang on one second, we're gonna go ahead and do one of those. Keep on rolling. We're gonna go east. I'm gonna go east this time. Eastward bound. Um, so it is at the, that, uh, my sexuality is at the root, my identity is at the root of my disconnection in life. Or at least a part of it and my inability to connect with others, my inability to, um, you know, make make real relationships, make real friendships based off of off of who I who I seem to identify as or what I seem to be connected to. Um, only a handful of people in my life have have really allowed me to not only accept who I am but be more of who I am, truly uh, embrace that which I, I, I suppose I was born to be in a, in a way. Um, so, with that in mind, the military did a really good job of making me shut this part of my brain off and not identifying with this aspect. Um, so it's, at this age, at this point in my life, it wasn't it wasn't good, it wasn't right, it wasn't helpful in a sense, right? To be attracted to the same people that I would more or less um, be serving with, right? Um, you'll find later on in the story, when I go overseas, I was shacked up. I had one roommate, right? When you go overseas, you're, I mean, it's, I, I suppose it's different for everyone, but in, a, in, a, in, a, in my line, um, have one roommate and then you'd have maybe 
12 rooms to a bay and about 24, 24 guys, 25 guys to a bay. Two rooms, two persons, two people a room, right? My roommate just so happened to be uh, extremely attractive and ironically, it, it absolutely made for one of the most difficult experiences of my life. We'll get to that in a bit though. Um, so I joined the military at 18 and for the next two, two years, I would, um, I suppose I mentioned this in my previous video, I would um, just break away from society, right? I could maintain an income, but I would live under my father's house and, and drink myself to death. I did not die, thankfully. Um, but at, 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 a, at that young of an age, um, it was this scary amount of alcohol. Thankfully, I've heard way worse. So it wasn't, you know, the worst in the, in the book, um, but it was also on my own a lot. I didn't really party with many other people too much. I would isolate myself and really um, break away from society. You know, until I absolutely had to go out. Even my job um, was more so on my own. I was I was a lone wolf at my job. I was the only employee. Um, there was like three other lifeguards at the place. It's funny. I had two different lifeguarding jobs. One in which was the YMCA, which I was one of three lifeguards. So I was the only one on shift, morning shift, 5 a.m., which I never made it to, to work on time. For, for certain reasons. Um, but I was the only one on, on, on shift. Um, and then my other lifeguarding job was at the uh, local um, uh, amusement park uh, where there was a lot, a lot of youth, a lot of young adults, um, which only made it that much more difficult to uh, um, detach from my, from my sexuality and, and who I was attracted to. So, a, just a whole lot of uh, fumbling around with who I am uh, at, at a young adult, at the young adult age, not really knowing or understanding what was right or wrong. Um, this, this chapter would be really confusing, a very confusing time in my life. Self-identity was completely lost. And I didn't know right from wrong. I didn't know what the Bible said or what the what um, what, what what God would really say or, or or do to people like me. I should back up a little bit. Um, throughout my teen years, I was heavily enrolled in church. Um, I would I would be able to. lose myself. So school was difficult, but when I went to church, I was able to um, find a connection with people that are accepting and whatnot. Um, so as, as, my, as my connections in school were bad, I was able to get a little more grounding by going to church. However, as I connected with people in church, I would detach spiritually. Um, I would be able to put on a great front. I was able to put on a good mask and, and you know, through, you know, um, through things like worship. I was uh, big into worship in church and I was able to join certain groups where I could seem as if I was on fire for Christ. Um, you know, but I could not struggle more so. I could not develop more questions inside my heart um, while putting on a front and just begging for, for friendship and connection and truth and understanding, you know. But I was I wasn't able to talk about this deep aspect, this 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 deep seated problem that, uh, that is, is apparently not not acceptable, you know, in the Christian realm. Um, don't worry, I've come to an understanding that it's not the person that is 
not accepting it as much as it is the action that is the sin, so to speak. Uh, but I didn't get this as a young, as a young, young adult, and uh, I struggled with it spiritually, and just did not get it. I just did not understand it. I, I shoved it down. I tried to make. I tried to change it. Um, I would try and detach. I would try and mask it with, you know, still getting girlfriends and whatnot. And uh, up until I went overseas, I would I would have a girlfriend that I would. I would carry through high school and out of school, and um, it was a good connection. Don't get me wrong; like uh, she was, she was that masculine female that I could connect to, that um, could almost complete my 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 lack of masculinity, but my my almost true identity in, in the feminine uh, aspect. Because you know, I I do feel slightly more feminine than I am masculine. I have to work to become masculine. Um, and it seems easy for me to care for others. Um, I know it may not look like that nowadays, um, but I am a na I'm a natural nurturer. I, am, I, I support others uh, very well, much, but much more than I can lead others. Um, be that as it may, I would enter the military and, and practice my leadership role. I would learn to become masculine um, and break away from this uh, this this identity of of this self identity, this self this, this crisis of not really getting it, not understanding what it means to be attracted to the same sex or the same person. Like I said, narcissism would I'd like to think that narcissism puts me at a point where I'm just attracted to myself, hopefully enough to, to keep me going one more day. Um, but it's it's so cut off um, that I just don't get it, you know, or I didn't get it. Um, whew. Two more hours, folks. <laughs> um, anyway. Just left Michigan, by the way. I forgot to bring. I forgot to bring something, but uh, I'll be glad I did because I'd, I'd prefer to keep this uh, sober, a sober drive. I, I did want to exercise, but um, there's a possible event, family gathering that I could be going to. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to make it. Anyway, uh, so. The military would further dichotomize this, this this aspect of me that I just don't get or didn't get and didn't understand. Um, and up until I went overseas, I would just break away and use drugs to just shove it down and, and, and not really understand it whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I went overseas at the age of 20 and went to, uh, went to Egypt. What a place to go. Um, the place doesn't matter as much as, um, as, as obviously as much as the experience. Um, and now it wasn't very physically, I should back up. Let me back up one more time. Right before I went overseas, I did find an attachment. Um, I went to the gym. I went to the gym for the first time. Uh, one of the first times. Like, I went to the gym um, on my own. Like, I decided that I needed something. I don't even know um, what spurred the intent. Um, I'll be darned if my mom just asked me to go to the rec center one day and I just went there one day and met somebody, plain and simple. I met the very person that I, um, I go see nowadays. I met a mentor, a friend, a brother in arms, um, I met a bro, I met another bro. Um, he would be a guide though, more, more so of a mentor. As I met him at the gym and had absolutely no clue what to do, he would be an absolute guiding light to, um, to disciplining myself in becoming a man, a masculine, uh, well-rounded guy. 
very aggressive and very hard-headed, but extremely intelligent, and um, would, would later go on to do many, pursue many accolades. Um, I've said this in videos before, that he is uh, a gentleman uh, that I could never fulfill the shoes of, like, way too difficult of a life. You know, one of those backgrounds that are just, I could never, ever see myself going through. Um, out of sheer physical pain, he's been through a lot of difficulties, a lot of hardships, but he's gotten through them, you know? Um, so I looked up to him in that aspect of, man, I just want to be strong. Um, and I met him at the gym, and he was that guy. So three months before I went over, he was that guiding light to give me a, an attachment to a skill, you know? Um, lifting isn't necessarily um, and it, and it, you know, there, it, it does take a level of um, intelligence and, and it involves obviously um, exercise, to use that term lightly, Exercise involves a bit of training, um, not just the body, but um, fundamental concepts, right? You, you, you see nowadays that there is, you know, a right and wrong, and and lifting became my attachment, my outlet became my my way of connecting to connecting my body to the rest of the world. And this is this is something I've obviously talked about many years before in all my videos. Um, lifting became my outlet, you know? I, I, I wouldn't have to go to school for lifting. I wouldn't have to get training in lifting. I could lift and learn. Whoa, hang on. Uh, hang on. I don't like being in the left-hand lane, but couple gentlemen that just prefer to zoom. My goodness. Just a little bit. My hand is just rocking, rocking right now. So yeah, lifting became my outlet. I didn't have to go to school for it, even though I would eventually. Um, but lifting was an outlet that allowed my body the freedom to express itself without having to speak, right? I started realizing that I could formulate complete thoughts and complete sentences. I could actually speak my heart after getting this energy out. So obviously after 18 years of developing a hardened skin, you know, of, of all these masks, um, the, the gym would shed these masks slowly but surely. Um, this should make sense. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. The gym became my outlet to allowing me to express myself again, allowing me to be me, allowing me to, my soul to speak what it truly felt deep down. Um, you know, and it, it, it became my outlet. So I took that with me overseas. Like I said, I went, uh, went overseas at the age of 20. And <laughs> I became a beast, folks. A motherfucking beast. I became a warrior. Now, I'm, I don't think I'm meant to be a warrior. I don't think I'm meant to... Um, live the aggressive, hardened, um, you know, I, I, I could not, I don't think I can make it as, as, you know, a, a Navy SEAL, so to speak, even though I do believe myself, um, mentally capable to get through that level of training, um, believe you me, I could get through that training. Uh, mentally, 
Um, but I don't think I'm meant to pursue that sort of lifestyle in a sense, right? Um, I don't think I'm meant to live that life forever. Um, so there's a gray area when it comes to my my soul being able to pursue, you know, certain things. I've always found myself being a um, do-it-yourself um, or a uh, uh, not just a do-it-yourself but a jack-of-all-trades sort of individual. If I put my mind to it, I could accomplish or I could learn anything. I really could. Um, but mastering a skill, I just don't know what that skill is yet. You know, I don't have that. Um, I don't even know yet what it, what it could be. Um, and this is where it's getting difficult uh, being 35 now and just not knowing where to go or what to do. Um, I'm just so confused. And I just figured I would have had it down by now. Um, but I threw myself into lifting and I was able to express myself just a little bit more. Um, and I became a leader in the gym. I would, I would, I would start reading books um, and I would, I would be able to learn concepts and I would be able to start getting attached to the thing that that I know I could relate to everybody, right? It has nothing to do with sex or color or gender or or, or or anything. I understand the body and if you've got one then I can relate to you. That's where I was coming from. That's where I knew I could I could reach everybody, right? Didn't matter, matter whether you were man or woman, or didn't matter who you were attracted to, what color skin you had, or where you were from. The body has, the body is, the, the human body is understandable, and we can learn it, and we can come to a common understanding about it. Now that, you know, everybody's body is different, so there's endless, endless information, right? This is where the paradox of infinity um, becomes paradoxical a little bit because it's almost like it's almost like black and white meets every color in the world. Um, you know, um, there's infinite colors, yet there's a spectrum. There's still just one spectrum. So, and I know there's a lot more to that now. So when it comes to science and, and you know, you're, if you've got like a, a, a PhD and, and, and whatever, and, and this or that, it's like, I get it, there's more to it, but I'm trying to stick to basic fundamental concepts that most people can understand, you know? Um, so the body is a unit of measure that everybody can come to an understanding where everybody can, can, can at least understand because we've all got one body. Um, I don't know if there's anybody walking around with just a head, you know? I think we need the, the brain stem in order to take the nervous system, which is your brain and your thoughts and all the electrical impulses in order to shoot it down into the body and get connected into the body. I am of the mind, mind frame that the mind and body are one. This is where emotions can get the best of us. Whereas we think that um, I'm anxious up here or I'm depressed up here, right? I, I think I'm depressed or I feel I'm depressed. But feelings are all in the body. So when you're depressed, this is how I like to imagine it, um, you're depressed, you're so lost up in your brain, and all the thoughts are so mixed up. Every thought is more or less opposite, right? So depression leads to suicide. The common thought of a, of, of a suicidal thought is, I want to die, but I just want to live, or I just want someone to save me, right? Um, I know that's very gray, um, but every feeling Every emotion has an equal and opposite feeling that gets stuck in the head 
and all we end up having to do is get out of our head and get into our body. Um, there's plenty that goes, there's plenty of books on this. So I know these concepts aren't, aren't inaccurate, um, but I know it can be very confusing. Um, anxiety um, leads to things like obesity and cancer. Like emotions, I've said this in videos before, emotions lead to physical problems. You know, I, 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 I can't justify things like diabetes and obesity and, and, and um, dare I say, like um, cancer and heart disease. But I have, I, I absolutely believe them to be emotional trauma that's trapped in the body. And if we just come to an understanding of how to release that trauma. Now granted, that emotional trauma does become genetic. So if your parents and your family over the years um, pass these traumatic experience through life, then yeah, you can be born with heart disease. You can be born with diabetes and take that all throughout life without being able to fix it. But in, but in all regard, it can be changed. It can absolutely be fixed. Maybe not in your generation, but if you do plan on having kids, I'm sorry to have to stem this on a you instead of me, but I do believe that that the diseases that we've created over time can absolutely be undone, right? Um, we just we just take the easy way out, right? We all take the easy way out. Most of us take the easy way out. Only the select few of us really figure out a way to, 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 to fix ourselves the so-called correct way, you know? And I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to judge folks because I don't know how, right? I, I've, 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 I have ideas and concepts, but I mean, it's not gonna work for everybody. So I'm not gonna try, sit here and try and fix anybody, um, you know? But anyway, <laughs> overseas. <laughs> Woo! Yeehaw, folks. Um, I would develop a hardened soul. I would put on armor that gets really thick, um, but I would be able to get attached to a new form of, I could get attached to something. My skill is the body. It's a really vague skill, of course, um, but maybe emotional connection to the body, expressions, and um, emotional trauma is a part of it. Need to uh, slow down here or something. I don't like where I'm at. Um, anyway, the military didn't help with my sexuality either. Like I said, don't ask, don't tell is, is not I don't know if it's the greatest policy, but you know, got me to where I am. So I'm still unsure as to what, whether that's a good or bad thing. But um, you know, I'm not hating. It just it is what it is. It was difficult. It certainly was difficult. Um, it was extremely difficult. It was fucking difficult as shit. Um, I shove it down, the more I shove that aspect of my life down, the less I am myself, really. It's that simple. Um, I can only, I can only pray that people express them, their true selves. Um, you know, I've coined the term live expressively for a reason. Um, but be true to yourself is what I would like to say. And I, I, I was not true to myself throughout my military years. I would I would put, I, I would get ragged on, guys, obviously. I would get ragged on, but I would eat it up, right? I would formulate such a hardened skin in the military that it would be, it's very difficult to, it's taken many, many years to, um, to accept who I truly am, I suppose, in a, in a way. Um, 
especially seeing as, as I, my, like my roommate was legit. My roommate was, gosh darn it, one of the most attractive guys in the company. Um, and it was difficult. So I developed a hardened skin. Um, I nearly killed myself overseas. I don't want to say nearly, you know, I, I, I couldn't come close. You know, I tried, but I was not even smart enough to figure out how to do it appropriately. Um, but yeah, it, it, it wasn't easy, but I got stronger. So I, I know I keep on going around in circles here, but um, it, it did give me something to attach myself to. I am literally going around in circles. Um, it really is the uh, underlying difficulty, though, that I that I had. I would I would I would separate myself further from family. Obviously, physically, halfway around the world. Um, all I would be able to do is, is write my brother just endless essays about how I felt. Um, and I couldn't, I didn't come out to them until after I got back. Um, I was baptized overseas not really knowing what it truly meant. I, I, I understood the concept. Um, and I do believe that I... I, um, I, I, I changed. I did a 180. <laughs> that I made that 180 change when I got baptized, but I also saw it as putting on a big time mask. Not a mask, but a, um, a spiritual face. Like I thought that I had to make it a glorious thing. That's almost why I did it overseas. I was baptized in the Red Sea, um, and I. I, um, I felt like I had to make it really I, I, iconic, right? Um, even though I had nobody there to, um, to cheer, you know, and, and, and joyfully rejoice in the experience. Um, I've, I've always done, I've always done well of putting on masks that make it seem as if I, I, I mean to do something right. But in reality, I just, I never really knew what that right was. So I would act like I'm doing the right thing by making it as awesome as I could, um, but really not having a clue as far as what it means to do it the right way. So, you know, I got baptized overseas and I saw the pyramids and Mount Sinai and Jerusalem. <laughs> like, I went to Egypt, folks. Um, but I had no clue. I had no idea what I was walking into. Um, and I still haven't read the Bible from beginning to end, so I, I still have no clue of the level of impact that, that my past has really had on me. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen Israel understanding what that really means. I've seen Jordan, Israel, and Jerusalem. It was a three-point. It was Israel, Jordan, and Cairo, maybe? I don't know. I can't remember the three points. We had an observation point that sat right on a... On, I mean, you could look out and, and see all three. And uh, just realizing that you're in the heart of Part of it all is, is something else, but I had no idea. I mean, I really had no idea. I still don't know, you know, what's going on with Israel nowadays. It's like, man, to be over there right now, that's something else. That'd be crazy. Um, I do want to go back. I do feel 
like dropping everything nowadays and, uh, and just giving up. That wasn't very nice. Why don't you just get in the left-hand lane, bro? Um, I, I am at the point where I'm ready to drop and, and just serve. I just don't know who to who. I just don't know who to serve. You know, I don't know. You know, I've been thinking of, of you know, doing like a, my brothers and some my, my one of my half brothers does Samaritan's Purse. Um, you know, I've always thought of doing like a, like a, like a, not like a Red Cross or like a Peace Corps sort of thing, which is going out into service. Um, I just don't know who to do it for anymore. Like, I don't want to be underneath anyone specifically. I want to learn an aspect, but I just want to go out there and why are we all, what's with this? Come on, folks. Oh, okay. Better. Appreciate the wonder. I just don't know who to serve anymore. It seems as if every single choice that I make, is it just seems wrong. So I don't know where to go or what to do. Sorry to bring it back to now, but um, overseas is probably a completely different story. I, prefer, I like I like telling those stories in person, uh, but they were it was a defining moment, big time change, um, into independence. Right, I, I I became very disciplined individual. So when I got home from overseas, it was me. It was all me. I. Don't get me wrong, I would not make good decisions for the next six months of being on unemployment. Uh, I took the easy route. I went to go live with uh, uh, my mentor again. Um, he would be in college and I would, I would go to the gym. I had money from overseas. I saved money from overseas and I... Uh, I just lived off of it for a few months, bought a car, and just went on unemployment, um, and and became a I became a machine. I became an absolute straight up savage, an alcoholic savage, nevertheless. Um, but I became a warrior, a, a fucking savage. Um, in the gym, I became a tank, straight up. I would put up walls and barriers to my entire life. Um, and I would identify as this individual who who I I could identify myself as as what was known at the time and, and still somewhat you know still understood to be a common you know job title as a personal trainer. Basically, I was looking at becoming a personal trainer without even knowing it, um, and would eventually do so within the next few years. Um, but out of the military, I had a good six to eight months of just picking up um, uh, side work here and there, um, and, and just exercising. I, I made one or two, one or two good friends solid, solid connections in the gym, ones that I could take out of and, and, and call to this day and, uh, and be thankful for. Um, I don't want to mention names, I guess, until the final videos, but yeah. <laughs> Chris, Gene... Karen, Andy, Sean, hats off to you guys, I really appreciate it. Gym bro at that time, and 
then uh, became a savage, straight up. That savagery would come to a point in my life where it was, it eventually came time to the point where it was either continue on in the military aspect or um, pursue an education um, upon this newfound skill, so to speak. So I could either double down and educate, or I'm sorry, I could either educate myself in this skill of, of um, fitness, sci uh, exercise science, uh, the body in forms of, of health and wellness, um, or I could pursue the uh, military aspect and uh, become more of a savage. I would have gone airborne, infantry ranger, um, there's green berets, um, as far as the army goes. I was not a marine, um, but I could have done sniper school was an option. Um, and, and, and all these schools were, I, I, I was definitely ready. I was ready to just go full-fledged and, 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 and become a badass, right? Um, but instead, instead we took the education, educatorial, edu edu <laughs> took the educational route um, and tried to double down with, you know, work, so to speak. I more or less identified myself as a worker rather than a soldier. Um, and I think that's for the better. Um, seeing now what it's like to put in 20 years in the service, I honestly don't know if I could have done that. Um, it's just a very specific niche. It seems as if I'm still on this game of uh, master of many crafts, right? Do it yourself, um, right? I don't master one specific thing. And perhaps my, that's my downfall. I haven't necessarily gone all in with one thing, but are just under the speed limit that I want to go. It seems like everybody's in the middle lane though. Goodness. Um, yeah, I have never really doubled down on one specific niche, so to speak. Um, so I went back into school and continued training and um, upgrading my skills the exercise, science, uh, health and wellness aspect. Started catching on to diet really well. Um, food, I mean, I've been eating longer than I've been exercising, so it, 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 was, it was a lot easier, and it's a lot easier to eat than it is to exercise, right? So I found much more of a connection to food than I did to exercise, but exercise became the discipline, Food became the new passion, so to speak, um, and nutrition, so to speak. Um, as I got more involved with school, I would finally meet a new friend. Um, now, my gym partner, who I had worked with in my young 20s, he was... Um, very heavily involved with the um, medical profession. He was an EMT, um, going a uh, fireman. He started out with firemen and, and, and did EMT later. Um, I don't know, I, 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 I get mixed up with these things, but he was a badass. Um, I, um, my mentor, my first, if you can keep up, my, 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 my doctor friend mentor, uh, brother in arms dude who I first started got me into training he's the he's the current doctor so he's he's a genius in the medical profession so to speak so to speak 
Um, but after I got home from overseas, he was heavily involved in, um, in school, and I didn't see him for very much. So I found a new lifting partner who was still involved in the medical field, but still light years ahead of, of, of what I could ever consider myself being. Now I did, I did, um, I did want to get into the fireman aspect. I did want to get into EMT aspect, and that's why I went back into school. So I went into school, started with exercise science. Um, but slowly but surely, um, slowly but surely, I would detach from that idea, that that idea, and, and realize that I that's that's also a very difficult uh, profession. Um, so I would get more involved with personal training. I would get involved with uh, diet, nutrition, and creating uh, you know exercise and nutrition plans for people. Um, it was in my young 20s, from 21 to 24, where I was at the height of, I was at the top of my game, folks. I, I recall working 80-hour weeks with ease. You know, I wasn't, you know, I was under the influence at times. Um, not like I would be in my later years, my later 20s, but I was on top of my game. 80 hour work weeks were fun for me. Um, and that would not include my weekend, uh, military weekends that I would still have to crush sleeping, you know, six hours a weekend, you know, showing up to, waking up at 2 a.m. I'm sorry, partying Friday night, from partying Thursday nights, waking up, waking up at 2, 2.30 in the morning to get to drill by 4 and then sleeping 6 hours over the weekend, getting off of drill and then uh, Sunday evenings and then going to work Monday morning, going to school Monday morning. Like, I was a badass. <laughs> like, and I, I was kind of crushing it. It was hard and I was hungover, but I was young and full of energy. Um, so I, I was absolutely slaying my youth, um, but I was, I, I, it was still not my best, right? It wasn't even close to my best at all, uh, which is really, really funny to think about at times. Um, so, so crushing it for years, crushing it for three years, four years, I would become nutritionist, I would get, I would have uh, certificates, I would become a trainer, personalized coach, um, diet, uh, I, would have, I would have everything I could have short of a degree, right, um, and I wouldn't need a degree, like I was where I wanted to be for a few years. I was killing it, folks. So, personal trainer, supplement nutrition coach, um, going to school, training, yeah, personal training, and, uh, and, and and still in the military. So, it was hard, but crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. Around the age of 24, Coming to the end of my, uh, maybe at the end, maybe two, two and a half years into my, my education days, basically at the height of my training days, um, I honestly don't recall when I started losing it. Involved with MMA again. I would get involved uh, rolling on the mats, and slowly but surely, I would start digressing and making more poor.
poor decisions. More and more poor decisions because I would be at the height. There's only one way when you're at the top and that's down. Um, that's not true, of course. You could always be more disciplined, but that just was not the direction that I chose to go in. I, I, I wanted to have fun and I certainly did. I was having more fun and enjoying myself and slowly but surely, um, I would fall off of this, this good bandwagon of, of, of good, positive habits and um, get, get, get enrolled with, with drinking and drugs again, just having a good time. Um, I, I would I would know I would I would have friends um, you know enter enter Brian met him on the mats and uh, he's just a good bro uh, that I could that I could train and uh, teach and be almost like a mentor to in a way um, But also an outlet to to have some fun and you know meet people and get socialized again. Um, as I got socialized in with with young adults, almost I don't want to say underage people, um, but bordering bordering 18. When I was 23, I would hang out with, with you know, fresh out of high school people um, because, you know, lo and behold, I still felt like a kid. Um, so I would just have fun. I would be purchasing alcohol, serving it to underage, and I would not be the appropriate uh, mentor slash leader that, you know, I, I should be. Um, but I would be making friends, and, and I would um, have a fun so-called social life um, I would start accepting this aspect of sexuality more so so um, getting into the social life would sooner get me involved into partying clubs drinking um, and quote unquote gay clubs, right? It's venturing off and seeing if I could rekindle this aspect of who I was and um, seeing what 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 it, what it meant, if it was okay to uh, partake in certain, as, uh, certain uh, acts of life that uh, you know, that, that I could you know, feel good about but not necessarily know if it was necessary good thing via the Bible. Um, spiritual life was obviously not not the greatest at this time. Um, but yeah, I would start a descent. Wow, that sun is directly in my face. I would start a descent um, with just poor decisions and, and, and bad habits again. I would make friends and uh, I would feel good about myself for a short term and you know, feel good. Um, that is until um, those people started growing up and and being their own being their own selves, you know. As they were in high school, they would eventually go to college and uh, move and relocate themselves. So, as my social connections went down, I would throw myself into a deeper pit of finding, you know, friends in, in dark places, um, doing even darker things. I'm not a virgin. Probably one of the biggest mistakes. One of the. Um, 
yeah, I've thrown myself into that into that loop multiple times, uh, both ways. You know, uh, I'm not proud, of course, but you know, experiments are experiments, and I'm not going to. I don't want to hate on myself, but I certainly don't like it. So eventually, I would be in school, I would find myself in school, and I'm not even sure of the job I had at the time, um, and so I lost personal training, and I, and, uh, I, I honestly cannot recall the job that I had. So many jobs. By the way, just to put it in perspective, I've held over 60 different positions in my life. Um, I've had many, many, many jobs. Um, I just can't remember where I was working at the time. Where I, I, I found another, I found a, a, a good friend that was able to support me um, in a very healthy way. At least I thought. He would become my next brother. Um, that I, I, I've, I've just had the greatest connection to. You know, I put him right up, right up there at the top. Um, so billiard, enter billiard. Uh, I was in school and just enjoying short-term benefit of poor decisions, you know, I was just one bad decision after another, but, you know, happily, happily living this little life where I thought I was, you know, just making it through 20s, you know, I wasn't in a, I wasn't in a big time super college and, and, and not in a frat, you know, drinking my life away um, and, you know, going to crazy parties, but in a sense, I was. Every weekend, I would throw myself into a mess. Um, I'm really upset that I can't think of the job that I that I was enrolled in. Probably some, probably a uh, restaurant of some sorts, or landscaping of some sort. I had multiple jobs with the same guy. Um, I would work at a Chipotle, I would work at a David Buster's, I would work uh, as a landscaper um, for multiple years with the same guy. Um, being supported really well um, because at this point I had become more lost with who I was and where I was going, what direction I was looking to go to. Um, I, I had no direction by this point, you know, I, I, I knew that health was a thing and I could always go back to identifying as this health and wellness guy, um, so making friends um, in school, I actually found him in one of my nutrition classes, I believe, it was a diet nutrition class uh, that I met Bill for the first time. Um, and I could identify with this health and wellness guy, but I knew that my life was just completely ass backwards and I wasn't necessarily living healthily. Um, but I knew what I was doing. Knowledge, knowledgeably, I, I, knew, I knew what the fuck I was doing. Excuse me. Um, and he was uh, younger than I, he's younger than I was. He's younger than I am. And uh, I decided to almost become like a mentor friend in a way, um, acting like I could teach health and wellness, but in reality, absolutely craving and desiring the need for a connection, uh, which he provided. He was one that not only helped me accept, um, accept who I was, but helped me become more of who I was. I had, in time, had to tell him not only that I was attracted to guys, that I was also attracted to 
him, um, which is not easy, not a very easy thing to do, uh, because I don't want to break a friend connection. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to chance it, right? I'm sorry, I can't think. Of it, right? You don't want to challenge a relationship by by throwing that little wrench into the gear. Um, but he was very accepting and very open and uh, accepting of of who I was and who I am. So. From 23 to 26, 24 to 26, we would, I mean, he was a bro. He saved me from doing probably many dark and difficult, or many dark, making many bad decisions, so to speak. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> we made some pretty rough decisions, but I, I could not be more happy that it was with somebody else. Um, some of the best times of my life were in my mid-twenties and early twenties. Um, until the time came where we separated. I would, uh, I would go one way. I would, um, matter of fact, enter enter my actual filming videos, I believe I started, granted I was making uh, YouTube videos, you know, Big Wiz training, I got a Facebook page still probably, um, way back in my heyday, but I would then start another descent, a descent being, um, you know, I, I felt connected with others, but then I lost that connection. Um, and I'm not even sure, I can't even recall where or what he did or where I went. I know I went to the uh, an apartment complex, 17th floor high rise. I still got videos from that apartment complex. Um, and those were the days where I kind of felt like I was on top of the world. But I, 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 I probably was making more of a pit um, than ever before. Granted, the pit just kept on getting lower after my, you know, after mid twenties. But being on top of the world, being on seventeenth floor, um, you know, I lost a bro, but I didn't necessarily lose him. Um, but we just kind of detached a little bit. Um, he actually went on to do real things, right? He was disciplined enough to um, go military later on in life and get a, another form of education. Um, he's now a strength coach. He's now an athletic coach. And he's crushing it nowadays, you know, 10 years later, you know. Um, so he's doing his thing. And as people... I'm almost still stuck in my childhood, so to speak. You know, I've never really grown up, so to speak. I'm just putting on a facade of, of, of an adult life. But uh, I still, I still dream of running away. You know, I still dream of just peacing out and see you later. You know, um, just very childlike, so to speak. I just don't care. I just don't want responsibility. I just don't want any. Um, my God, this is where it becomes a little bit difficult. Yeah, so is this really only an hour and a half? I feel like this paused somehow. I don't know. I feel like every time I look at the camera's timing, it looks like it hasn't gone very far. Um, yeah, so the height of my, the 
height of my independence in my mid 20s I was pretty lost and I know it's going to get I'm going to get more lost as the story goes on but 25 years old I lived in a beautiful 17th floor high rise um, and I was doing some pretty bad things um, serving underage people again and trying to get reacquainted with I don't want to say lost souls but youth um, I would find work in odd businesses and odd jobs just to try and make a buck um, I couldn't find a place I couldn't find steady work I never found steady work in my 20s I've had I probably went through 40 40 jobs in my 20s no, no joke um, just every every act Maybe not every, right? I, I never sat at a desk. You know, I just couldn't do computer work. Um, I had more restaurant gigs, more um, manual labor jobs than I can count. It was just uh, difficult to keep up, difficult to find an actual... All right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and wrap this portion of my life up. This was my military um, heyday of work or uh, finding a skill, a passion to get involved with. Um, basically from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows, my early 20s. Um, so next section will be breaking free, getting away, um, kind of running away from it all, trying to find myself, um, so yeah, stay tuned for, what, hour four or three, I don't know, uh, catch you guys on the flip, keep living expressively.